Good afternoon. I was asked to speak about uh, two things, Laurier bike lanes and complete streets, and make sure I put the connection between the two. Zoom out a little bit and talk about two other things that I think are very relevant to this topic. So, first of all, so there's three things I'll be talking about briefly. Our policy framework, which is very relevant right now because we're right now in our five-year update cycle for the transportation master plan and the cycling plan. And also, uh, some of the other projects we have in the works, we haven't built them yet, but I think they speak more directly to complete streets. And then, of course, we'll talk about uh, Laurie. First of all, let's look at Ottawa. If you look at the small map on the bottom uh, uh, left, You'll see the city has a, a, a huge area, 2,700 square kilometers, but we have a very well-defined green belt. There's nothing in there. It's trees. And what that means is we have a big growth of suburban areas outside the green belt, and there's still uh, essentially plenty of room to, to grow. And so we have two very different cities that are trying to find a way to move towards a complete street strategy. You'll also see that the uh, trends uh, as regards cycling are also very different if you look at what's happening inside and outside the green belt. The numbers are up, but the relative proportions are different in terms of how the mix is evolving over time. In our transportation master plan update, we specifically put forward the concept of complete streets. And so you'll see the words in there. It's the first time we've done that. We've talked before about a transportation hierarchy. And I think ultimately, being successful with that is going to mean three things. First of all, we are starting to give some numbers and some metrics around the quality of experience for cyclists and pedestrians. Because we're always challenged with these hard metrics we get from traffic engineering like V over C numbers, and say, well, I'm sorry, but that fails. We can't support you. We know it would be nice, but the numbers show this. We're bringing in another set of metrics, both for pedestrians and cyclists, to try and show that there are real impacts to des decisions on how we share the road and other issues like adding things like extra turn lanes and so on. The second major initiative within this transportation master plan, and at this point it's just a preliminary proposal, is to question this idea of sizing roads for the peak hour and looking instead into the peak period. So if you look at these rough measures of V over C, volume over capacity, we have policies that tell us we can't get worse than 0.9 in the downtown core. Well, if you redo the math over the busy hour, or the busy period, which is two and a half hours, you find that you're now down to 0.6 or 0.7, and now maybe you do have space to put other things on the pavement. And so we'll see how this works out, but it's one of the key changes we're trying to uh, put forward, because you can't complete a street if you have nowhere to get the room to do it. The cycling plan update, uh, one of the key things in here is that we're actually adding a definition of a bike track. And this is something that we started with Laurie as a retrofit, but every time we looked at another place we could put it, there's a lot of resistance to that. Where'd this thing come from? There's no standards. Council hasn't approved it. So we need to bring that into the plan to be able to move forward. And that applies to a whole plethora of documents that sit underneath these master plans roadway cross-sections and standards that have years of work ahead of us. Justin. <laughs> now, let's look at what, what complete streets uh, uh, we've had. I'll show you some slides of what we're thinking of in the core. But where it gets really tough is how do we define complete streets just outside of Greenbelt, where we have these quite a lot of these very large arterials with lots of turn lanes. And you can see a recent comment we received from a resident nearby that might like to do something other than drive their car. This is a huge challenge. I'd love to see what other cities are doing about it. Now, our complete streets plan, uh, I think the best thing to look at is what we call downtown moves. We're putting in light rail, billion dollar investment. 
Downtown Ottawa is wall-to-wall -wall buses. We cannot fit one more bus in there. That's why we're going with double-deckers. However, that's going to change in a few years as we get light rail. And when we do, we're going to have some more space. And we want to use that space to essentially implement complete street strategy. We don't have much cross-section. You see a typical street here. Uh, it's got four somewhat substandard lanes and very small sidewalks. Uh, not a lot of room for other things like trees. So let's take one of these streets and let's reimagine it after we've found some extra space. And we're, we're going to change Queen Street, this is the one street we're going to do before light rail. It's going to be a shared environment, but hopefully without a lot of parked cars. This will be a very acceptable for cyclists, a lot more green, much more pedestrian space. Albert right now has a busway. You can see the diamond lanes on the uh, sort of uh, right-hand lane. Uh, that's going away, and that's going to change radically. We're going to include a left-side bike lane because it gets rid of some of the challenges with interaction between the remaining buses. Huge additional street space. Mackenzie King, uh, it's a bridge, a long bridge, which has that usual problem being a lot of concrete, a lot of high speeds. There's two dedicated bus lanes that we can remove off here, and as you can see, it's quite a dramatic difference. I don't really want to go here, but actually I wouldn't mind going there, and that's both from the perspective of a pedestrian and a cyclist. So, Laurier. Uh, Laurier bike lanes, how many of you, a show of hands, have actually been to Ottawa and maybe seen it or have, have driven down it? So a fair number. This process started a long time ago, actually probably even before April 2001. We had an intensive set of, uh, of analysis and, uh, and uh, public uh, discussions about this project. And then finally, in 2011, we opened the lanes. It was going to be a two-year pilot. Here we are, uh, coming up to the two-year anniversary where we're obligated to come with a report and see what we do with it. In between those dates, we'll have something like probably 700,000 trips. We do count them using automated bike counters. And the question is, what's the future? It's a pilot program. Anything's possible. It'll be up to our council to decide. However, our mayor recently you know, did decide to uh, make a statement about it, and uh, assuming we can go forward and maintain these lanes, the next big thing we're going to do is tie them together. This bike lane is about one kilometer or so wide, and downtown it's poorly connected to the east and the west. One of our big projects is now expanded to a 12-kilometer cycling corridor all the way through the city. And so you can see the Laurier bike lanes there in green, although this, this uh, came from the citizen, and we didn't quite build what's there. We only got as far as Elgin. So you can see it's just a relatively small section from Bronson to Elgin, and you have reasonable connections north, but not anywhere else. So now we're going to extend it significantly, and we expect the ridership will respond. The corridor selection process, we took, I think, 11 corridors as options. And I sat in a lot of these meetings with the various BIAs. And the, the, the way to summarize is when they all thought that the uh, bike lane was a fantastic idea, we needed it, but quite frankly, not on their street. It really belonged on another street. That was seemed to be the common, uh, common summary. And you can see all the criteria. This is all very well documented. We evaluated everything. Garbage drop-off. There was absolutely no perfect route. However, Laurier satisfied enough, enough of the criteria. It was, went forward as the preferred and ultimately the winning solution. When you look at this slide, every time you see blue, imagine green. We actually painted it green, and we don't want to change. So green is now the color for pavement. This is a typical intersection of Laurier. The key features are we put in a mandatory yield for right turns for cars that are turning right around uh, the bikes. And although you can't see it in the signals, we added a straight ahead six second advance 
for the signals, and that helped clear the cyclists out of the, uh, the bike lanes, as well as pavement treatment in terms of color uh, going across. It's been working reasonably well. We've been happy with uh, the results. We have not found uh, a tremendous problem with, uh, with this from a, from a safety point of view. We do have our reports that are going to council in a few weeks. So I think that on the safety side, we're, we're, we're pleased. I think there's a lot of behaviors that have to change, and I think we're going to do a little more outreach and try to deal with some issues like too many people are creeping around the turns. They know they don't really want to or can't turn, but they keep moving. They just can't help moving forward. And from a cyclist's point of view, I don't know what's going on in your mind, so it causes unnecessary confusion. We also are working with the MTO and CERC and Carleton University to uh, do a thorough analysis of conflicts in that area, and this is part of a research project that will be released in the near future. If you look at it from a plan view, we really worked hard to leave a few uh, parking spots, drop-off spots. It was very tough to do. What we found, we had to come back and add uh, drop-off spots. The, the temporary curves were a real problem for accessibility, and particularly people wanting to get picked up that had mobility challenges. So we went back and we readjusted and filled in the asphalt, brought it up so there's no curb and a few drop-off spots. We also put in three uh, bike counters uh, along the road, and that was really an important part of the whole story. Uh, we, we got a tremendous amount of uh, press. It was uh, in the citizen often. We, we put this on open data. Uh, the uh, bay counter, for example, a, a community association that was uh, looking to get their parking back uh, uh, videotaped and did another uh, report to count, check our bike counters to make sure they're accurate. So it uh, definitely got a lot of attention. Obviously you can see the, uh, the seasonal aspects. We do maintain them in the winter and so there is winter cycling all year on the Laurier bike lanes. Uh, we also uh, put the uh, bike counter data on the internet every day. You can check this website and find out how many people went the day before and you can look at the uh, data monthly and so on, as well as the total since it opened up. And this again has been picked up by the newspapers and you can, you can hear the, the, the data coming out in various forms. One day we stopped at lunch at, a, at one of the businesses along uh, Laurier. There's a lot of small retail. We haven't really won them over in terms of the bike lanes. We spoke with the uh, person who was the owner what do you think of these bike lanes? They're terrible. They're, they're terrible. Crazy ideal. Nobody's using them. So we asked him, well, why don't you just, how many people do you think are using them? Because he's there all day in front of uh, the window that overlooks the bike lanes. He gave it some thoughts at about 200 a day. The real number was 2,000. The problem is we as people aren't very good at, you know, adding up these small numbers, one, two, three, four. And so there's a lot of people that think it's a waste of time and we have to show them that it's actually a significant impact. I have a lot of conversations with people that say, oh, that's crazy, why are you doing this? I say, well, would you do it if this many people went on there? Yeah, I guess we would. Well, that's the number we're seeing. And so I think we need to also communicate. Uh, I've never actually come across anyone that guessed even nearly right when it comes to these sorts of numbers. So now we're in the, uh, uh, we've gone through a monitoring and evaluation that covered a huge number of uh, aspects, including surveys uh, for businesses, users, and uh, we also are uh, evaluating some technical things like how well some of the uh, devices hold up, and all that's coming to a report probably in about four or five weeks' time, and so we'll be able to see that all that online in terms of our full analysis. Lessons learned. I think without the, it being a pilot project status, I can hardly imagine us doing this. There's just so many people that felt it was impossible for so many reasons. That was a key enabler. 
The fact that we had uh, the, the barrier curve caused a lot of aggravation. I think if, if well, there's one thing we could have changed, I think we might have tried to raise it at, uh, at the same level as the sidewalk right off the bat. Some details about some of the uh, hardware we used. Uh, we, we, we found out better solutions. And also the full-time data collection, I think, was very important. I wish we had better data for some of the other traffic. We're not just uh, stopping at Laurier. Uh, we are actually uh, starting to build right now Churchill Avenue, which you see a photo on the left. And there we're doing a total road rebuild right down the sewers. And so we have more choice as to how we can configure it. So what you see here is we've got a bike track right beside the sidewalk and then a barrier between traffic. We would have loved to put something else here, like they do in Vancouver, but we have something called snow and lots of it, so there's a challenge there for maintenance. And we have other projects that are in the pipeline, and hopefully if we're successful with Laurier, get our uh, new strategic plans approved, we'll see a lot more of those, because we certainly do agree with some comments this morning, that that's sort of where you need to go to get the vast uh, bulk of the people cycling. Thank you very much.